and welcome to the trophy room reviews the last of us part one remake the long rumored remake the one maybe some people thought we didn't need maybe the one we deserve and along with me for the ride steve from console creatures how are you sir i'm doing very well I'm I'm so happy to be sitting with you. It's been so long since we've actually sat down and did a podcast together. So I, I'm stoked to be here and I'm stoked to be talking about Last of Us. I know. This is so I remember a few months back when, you know, this was just a rumor. This was just a piece of speculation of The Last of Us yep. being remade from the ground up. What does that mean? Mm-hmm. And then us seeing it at Gamescom for the first time and seeing the visual improvements of the last of us um kind of brought to modern day but the question lingering of with modern controls Mm -hmm. so today you know this review is going to be a little different this this conversation is going to be a little different you have played it uh finished it beat it Mm -hmm. i want to know walking into it what were you expecting from this remake yeah, I, I think that's a great question to kind of jump off of because, I mean, The Last of Us, one of the greatest games, period, I, I think. And I think a lot of people also uh, hold this game very close to their heart, whether you played it on PlayStation 3, the remaster on PlayStation 4, which is when I personally jumped in. Um, yeah. It was the first time I played it. Um, and it's been less than 10 years. So I don't blame people from, you know, seeing the the first reveal and all this stuff and be like, well, do we need this? Now, having played it and all that, uh, I I still kind of jump back and forth about it because hmm. for one for one part, my biggest expectation for this game was I want Naughty Dog to bring Last of Us to the place where Last of Us Part Two is. I want mm-hmm. With, with, you know, the uh, HBO series coming out with PlayStation 5 now out in the wild, whether or not, you know, a lot of people still have uh, have one or, or not. I want there to be like that fluid experience from going, OK, I played the first part. Now I want to go to the second part. And it doesn't feel like there's a 10 year gap in between where it's mm-hmm. down or like, you know, that big upgrade. Um, I know this is a PlayStation podcast, but going to the Xbox side, one of my favorite collections of games is the Master Chief Collection because you get the entire Halo experience on one disc. You don't have to go, well, uh, you don't have to recommend to a friend, hey, uh, you should check out Last of Us, uh, the first part, go plug in a PlayStation 3, go plug in a PlayStation 4, and then go get another uh, disc, this and that. It's, It's such a convoluted experience when in 2022, it should just be simplified to this point. Yeah. So that being said, I think that Last of Us Part 1 kind of achieves that. To a certain extent, I I think that, you know, it warrants its existence uh, Mm -hmm. and then it's dependent on how big of a fan you are of whether or not you should rush out, you know? Yeah, that's like for me when I take a look at like, and I've been preaching this since the moment we saw it, not everything has to be for us. That Mm -hmm. this, to me, I look at this product going, this is for people probably checking out the show first. And then for the hardcore Last of Us fan second, and then maybe for everyone else down the road. Mm-hmm. Um, but that said, I mean, I come from the PS3 era. Like I had this okay. game day one. And yep. I think the one thing that this game had to achieve is like when you always think about something in your head, you're always coming through it with a nostalgia lens of like it looks perfect as as it is, you know, 10 years ago as it was today. And you don't realize until you see the side by side pictures of like oh actually (laughs) actually this is quite an improvement and we've seen a lot of scenes where this game looks drastically different than what it was nine ten years ago so i want to go from that perspective is there a visual difference to you um a, a drastic difference like i'm talking you know demon souls to demon souls remake when they're saying it's built from the ground up how do those scenes hold up when you're talking through that cinematic lens to the moment to moment gameplay uh it's incredible uh, i think that that now we're at a place where it's a one to one uh experience from last of us part 1 to part 2 where before when the first time i played uh, last of us part 2 i jumped in and i was like ellie just looks different like Mm. she looks weird 
uh, in terms of like the timeline where it's like, okay, well, she looked very young in part one, obviously, but then she looked a little too old in part two for how many years passed in between yeah. the games. So I was like, there's, I understand that they're, you know, trying to make a, the most realistic model for her and, and all that. Now it do, that shift doesn't seem as drastic. I, I think you look at Ellie in uh, Last of Us part one and you can tell like that is the, the girl who grows up to be Ellie in part two. Like, and, and uh, the big thing, I think is that the the graphical improvements just Im enhance all the emotional beats of this game. So, I mean, I, we're not going to go into like story territory because either you right. played Last of Us part the the first part and know exactly what it is, or you haven't. So, there's no real point of like talking about the story at this point, in my opinion. But everyone that's played the game knows there's like three huge beats the the middle there's one at the beginning there's one kind of in the middle and then there's one at the end and i th those always stick with every single player i think this time around it's actually the smaller moments that stick with me only because you can see like the emotion between joel mm -hmm. and ellie as they're talking to each other there's a particular uh point of combat where you know uh joel is struggling with a hunter and he's uh you know uh, it's not a spoiler or anything, but like he's being like uh, tackled into a puddle and reaching for a gun and everything. And in this game, like you can see the struggle not only on his face but in his eyes. Like you can see the panic where he's like, "I, I'm, I'm about to die right now." <laughs> and it's those small moments that I think you don't get in the remaster or the original version of this game. So when Naughty Dog was saying, "Hey, we, we, this is, this is as close as it gets to representation of." the actual performance performance yes. they really do mean it yeah and one thing i i keep coming back to is that last of us is known for its narrative right everyone praises this game for for good reason that this is one of the best written games ever and i think part one finally gets the visuals to the same level as the narrative where i don't i don't think there's any um i mean back in the day yeah the last of us looked great for being a, a the sunset product of the uh, PlayStation three and then coming into PlayStation four. But I think finally it's, it's, it's on par where it's the visuals are just as good as the narrative. All right. All right. See, that gets me really excited when you say it's the little moments, it's the, yeah. it's the performances actually getting caught almost one-to-one -one. Mm -hmm. the combat though. Yes. The combat. Yeah. We just like literally as of recording, we finally just saw what the combat looks like. Mm-hmm. Steve, this looks like the last of us one combat. There's no dodging. There's no prone. Nope. Nope. This is the same experience you're getting. Albeit, I will say that I like it a little more this time around. And I don't know if it's just because I it's been a while since I played The Last of Us, mm -hmm. uh, the original, but I always felt that it was slow. I controlling Joel in The Last of Us, it always felt slow and I always go back to it that The Last of Us always felt like a stealth focus game, while Last of yes. Us Part Two felt like a shooter. Ellie oh. felt more fluid in, in her combat and everything, and she fell faster switching between weapons. Here, it almost feels like it's kind of in the middle, where you do, you do still have all those same stealth uh, sequences. You can still throw the brick and methodically take out your enemies one by one. But I also don't feel held back whatsoever of pulling out a pistol, shooting some guy in the leg, watching him get down, hit him over the head with a bottle, or just swap between uh, weapons with the, the weapon menu. I feel like the weapon menu this time around is a bit faster where it doesn't feel like it's a hindrance to combat. Mm -hmm. But that being said, I mean, it is the same combat at the end of the day. You are still tucking him behind a box, shooting a guy. It's the same Naughty Dog combat we've played across generations yeah. at this point. So I don't think there's anything core added or taken away. I just feel like it's better at this point. Okay. And so when we talk about the combat, not a, has it aged well? Uh, the combat itself, I think has uh, mm -hmm. one, one thing I think that they did add is um, great hit detection and great. Uh, the addition of gore. Like this is last of us part two levels of, of gore and violence. If that's your, if that's your jam, like it does add a level of brutality to Joel uh, where outside of the narrative, Joel actually feels like, you know, he's killing to survive. Yeah. Um, there's, and I, when I talk about the hit detection, I, I, I mean like some games, some third person shooters, when you hit someone in the leg, it will just fake that you like you did. Like you just have to yeah. be around the leg and it'll be like, ow. And then kind of, you know, stumble <laughs> here. If you shoot someone in say uh, the elbow, their arm will come off. 
and mm. it's it very graphic. And uh, if you shoot someone in the back of the head, the the blood splatter and the gore effect will come out of the of the eye in front of them. And it's it it, it adds you know a haunting, eerie you know level of brutality to Joel uh, when you just gaze upon a you know this small you know battlefield and you see parts and and stuff like that. Like it's giblets. Yeah, just you know, <laughs> clicker giblets and and yeah. and and hunter giblets. Yeah, no, it's it. I I think that's the the biggest thing that they they added to just enhance it. But yeah, uh, you're not really getting that much. Let's talk about that dual sense functionality. Let's talk. Yeah, uh, you know us. We're big dual sense stands. Uh, yes. God, I love that them adaptive triggers. I love them haptic love feedback. Yep. Uh, how does how does the dual sense? Does it enhance anything here? Does it feel good uh, when you're really when they they talk about pumping a shotgun? It really feels like you're pumping a shotgun. Like, does that stuff hold true? Does it feel important? Does it add anything to the to the gameplay experience? It it's it's funny, and this is not to take away from the Last of Us. I feel like we're just at the point where we're very spoiled um in terms of being playstation 5 owners and players where a lot of games just have the adaptive triggers and the haptics where i i feel like at a certain point like we just have to assume that they're gonna have them and they're gonna just be you know you know the the console's bread and butter and here i think that's exactly what it is everything that you've played and experienced you're getting here um when ellie pulls back on her bow you feel it in the and the, uh, the the triggers uh, when you pick up items and Joel puts them into his backpack, you get a little bit of like a haptic response. Feels mm-hmm. cool. Yeah. Um, what I will say though, the DualSense excels at is part of its accessibility features. So I'm I'm not gonna pre- sit here and pretend like I'm I'm you know the masterclass of knowing what goes into accessibility and all that. But going through the accessibility features of this game, it's from what I've seen, a fairly one-to-one uh, experience from Last of Us Part Two over here. Like I think that Naughty Dog just excels and is a leader in this space, and has brought over the suite of accessibility features over to Part One. And in that, there's a a, a particular uh, accessibility feature that I was playing around with for the Dual Sense, where in in case you know you're hard of hearing or you know just deaf, and you're just relying on subtitles, the Dual Sense can actually mimic. Um, voices to a certain extent and the emotional impact of those voices and it will come through in the haptic so say joel and ellie are whispering you'll get like a little bit of like haptic feedback in the dual sense or vice versa if joel is like yelling or has like you know um ellie's yelling or anything like that yeah yeah or something like that that will come through and you'll feel those vibrations in the in the controller itself It's, it's very cool and uh the same thing with um you get the the same similar features of you know collectibles uh you can turn on like the collectible vision thing if you're a collectible hunter like myself going for those trophies uh, i so heard the trophy list little... is too easy and i want it to be really hard again did you yeah i i, I that's what that's what people on the internet can play oh about well boohoo it, it's a really <laughs> good trophy trophy list as good. far as i'm concerned yeah same. <laughs> very accessible um going to a uh, back to accessibility thankfully they got rid of all the difficulty uh trophies so you can customize your experience so say you know you're just looking for the story this is your first time jumping in for the story you've never been able to play this game on playstation 3 or 4 due to accessibility reasons you can customize the entire uh experience so that you can drop the uh difficulty of the enemies specifically without dropping the difficulty on any other aspect of the game and you can customize the entire thing just like you were in part two so i think that they put a lot in there to kind of do that but as far as like dual sense uh specific features for you know core players like us i don't think that you're getting anything um too enhanced uh, yeah too crazy it's just you know mm-hmm. tap uh adaptive triggers haptics that sort of thing though one cool thing not yeah. a game changer or anything but uh the light bar displays your health so if you're at like full health it's green once you drop down to about like 25 percent, it goes red Le- yeah. neat little thing but i'm not staring at my controller the entire time it's just sometimes i'll see it's red. i'm like oh yeah maybe i'll uh pop a health back <laughs> Maybe. Okay, so at the end of the day, we'll do it. We'll talk about it. This just once, audience. There's no factions. No factions multiplayer. This is 70 Doll Hairs. A remake, Mm -hmm. could you believe it, in 2022? (laughs) This economy? (laughs) This economy? 
Oh my goodness, the audacity, Steve. Yeah, seventy dollars. Yeah. Who would you recommend this to? You already said, like, look, this is one of the, and, and personally to me, this is one of my top five all, all-time favorite games. They got yep. me no matter if they charge me a hundred bucks, to be yeah. honest. Um, yeah. Whatever. Um, but but how far would you say that, that you know, you would recommend this to a, a fan, a stan, and a newcomer? So, yeah, so obviously I'm talking in a in a place of privilege. PlayStation Canada provide me a code for this. So so I do, you know, have to come in and kind of look at the everyday consumer and what uh, where they're going to kind of spend their money. Obviously, besides the business decision, this game screams, hey, if you're in, enticed by the HBO series that's coming out or you start watching and you're like, I need to know the source material, this is the game for it. Uh, this is the game for you yeah. uh no matter at the time what the pricing is like this is the game to just jump in experience this game for, for the first time like i this is the best uh definitive version of this game um but that being said if you're a uh, just a t- typical fan like you've played the last of us you've gotten all the trophies the the platinum you're like wow i i know this story front and back i don't see th- the reason to go out and buy this right now yeah um if you're the diehard fan, like you've got tattoos of the last, you got the firefly symbol on your arm, uh, you you preach the gospel of Naughty Dog <laughs> and, and Troy Baker as as Joel and everything. Yeah, yeah I, I think that you'll appreciate this game. Like I said, there's smaller moments. The the visual uh, aesthetic of this game is beautiful. Uh, if you're one of those like you know technical nerds that has like you know. A C1 LG or a C2 LG, and you're like, I me too. Uh, and I need to play like the premier blockbuster games on this thing. Yeah, I, I I think that you're you're wise to pick this up eventually. But again, do you need to go right now? In Canada, this game is ninety dollars. You're pushing a hundred dollars after tax. Um, <laughs> just a little less in the in the US and everything. And I don't know because I would be. I'll say this right now. I would be shocked if PlayStation doesn't put this on PlayStation Plus Premium by the time the HBO series is concluded mm. its season. I, I would be legitimately shocked because you can already see the promotional material come up and being like, here's the season finale, series finale. I don't know how they're doing yeah. it. Of The Last of Us, go buy a PlayStation 5 and play The Last of Us Part 1 with PlayStation Plus. Like That just makes perfect business sense in my opinion, yeah. but... Who knows? Mm-hmm. So if you're looking for a deal, if you're like, man, I'm I'm kind of, you know, I don't have the means to go and fork out $80, $100 for this game. I don't see the reason why you have to rush out. Yeah. But if you're a diehard fan of Last of Us, this is the best way to play it. I, I couldn't I couldn't go back to the remake or uh, remaster yeah. after this. Absolutely. And that's a, a great and fair assessment, Steve. Um, I like again. I'm the diehard fan. I'm so right. excited for this. I can't wait to experience it again. But yeah, is it necessarily needed? I don't think so either. No. Uh, it's not like, you know, a lot of people try to bring the similarities of like Demon Souls, Demon Souls remake, as you joked about earlier. And it's just like yep. that game showed its age. And yeah. I think this is more from what our, our conversation is. It's more of a refinement of of the last of us and getting it polished up for those newcomers for that tv show and for Mm -hmm. the diehards so yeah Yeah. it's a great assessment steve and and i want to thank you again for coming on sharing your thoughts anyway thank you for for having me i just want to point out one other thing because you were talking about you know showing your age is showing its age and all that last of us still kind of does show its age despite the refinements okay um you know, I think that uh, aspects of the game, like moving the dumpsters, boosting alley over things, uh, go fetch a ladder over here and bring it here, it slows down the momentum so much for me. And especially coming off of part two, which felt so fast, uh, Ellie's yeah. movements and and everything just felt so fluid and fast. I do think that, you know, to a certain extent, I kind of wish that Naughty Dog put a little more, uh, it brought a, some changes to the gameplay in terms of that, yeah. but. Uh, otherwise this is one of the best games ever made Uh, and yeah like you like you're saying like it's it's a refinement to it it's the best way to play it uh but again yeah no that's a great point because it's still being held back by in theory the ps3 of how that architecture of how to lay out levels and those little hidden loading screens they're still there Uh, well that's funny because the 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 
the reasoning why uh, or the the hidden treasures of like hiding loading screens and everything are still there but the loading screens aren't like you're yeah. flying through cutscenes transitioning into gameplay like it's all so fluid but then you see like you know Joel kind of slowly moving a, a dumpster to hold the door open so Ellie can jump through and then the game's back loading. It's like, you're not loading anything. Just come on, cut it yeah. out. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, yeah come on. Steve. Time's money. <laughs> Steve, thank you so much for coming no, thank out. Thank you. Any, anywhere that, you know, you'd like to spotlight yourself? You know what? Uh, just find me on Twitter at SVicVari. That's the best way to keep up with me. And uh, I hope we, we can do this again sometime. Let's not go too long uh, without talking, you know? Same. God of yeah. War Ragnarok, maybe? Hey, let's do it. Hey, I heard it's coming. I heard it's coming. That's what they're saying. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all so much. Thank you, Steve, for, for sharing your thoughts. Go follow him over at Twitter. Link down below. Follow us over here at the Trophy Room. You know where all those things are. Link in the description. With all that said, with all that out of the way, everybody, keep what's about you. Keep hunting. Keep playing PlayStation.